What's up guys, it's Brad from Letter Protect here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and get started in our new SpiderFi add-on for Blender. If you don't know what SpiderFi is, this video should give you a pretty good overview of our add-on and how to use it in very simple ways. And in addition to this video, we will also be releasing further videos with more complex setups using the add-on. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and install the add-on. Once you have downloaded the install file from Blender Market, all you would do is just open up Blender here and just go to edit and then preferences and make sure that add-ons here is selected and then just go to install. And now we're just going to navigate to where our download has been saved. So for you, that may be under downloads, but I have it saved here in this file. So I'll just click on SpiderFi install 2.9 and the 2.9 version works in both Blender 2.8 and Blender 2.9 so just keep that in mind when you download and we'll just go ahead and select the install file and click install add-on and it should pop up here but if it doesn't you can just search for it in the uh, sidebar here so we'll just go ahead and press spiderfy and as you can see this is our add-on here and we'll just click on the checkbox and that will enable it in our user interface inside of blender so i'll go ahead and close that and now spiderfy is installed in our right toolbar here if we just go ahead and select it as you can see we have all of the different settings and tools we can choose from all right, so SpiderFi is pretty simple to use. Pretty much how this works is you can choose which kind of bugs you want included in your bugs void systems. Then you name your system, whatever you want it to be called. Then you choose the amount of bugs that you want included in that system, whether or not you want to add a goal for the bugs to follow. And then finally, this button here is where you add that system that will take these settings above. Then below the bug system uh, settings here, we just have some extra operators in case you want to add some collision objects for the bug void particle systems but I'll get into this in a later video pretty much it's just basic collision objects that your bugs can interact with in case you want them to move in a specific way um, anyways I'll just go ahead and go through a very basic example for the sake of this tutorial but more in-depth tutorials will be coming soon so first I'll go ahead and just delete everything in our scene here as usual we'll just add a basic plane to our scene here and I'll scale it up and then I will use our selected geometry to collision button here so just while our plane is selected we'll use that button to turn this plane into a collision object for our bug particles and uh, as you can see here when we go under the uh, modifiers tab we have collision and fluid modifiers on it which just means that our bugs can interact with the surface but anyways let's go ahead and continue here for this specific example I'll just add the black widows in this specific void system keep in mind that whenever you select a crawl system and a fly system together that the crawl system will override the fly system so for example if locust is selected and black widows or any of these uh, crawl systems are selected as well then the locust will no longer fly it will crawl along with the rest of these objects um, however if you of course if you deselect the crawl systems and just add the locust system by itself they will fly like you've seen in the trailer that's just how the add-on is designed um, so just keep that in mind when you're using it um, of course, you can enable and disable a lot of these settings in the particle system tab inside of Blender. But anyways, let's go ahead and I'll continue with the addition of the Black Widow. So I'll go ahead and select it. Now we'll go ahead and name our particle system. It's very important that you name it every time. Otherwise, the script is going to give you an error. Again, that's just how it's designed so we can uh, organize everything a little bit better. So let's go ahead and just call this uh, Widow attack and now below this we can choose the amount of bugs that we want included in our system so we'll go ahead and maybe uh, change this to 40 just for the sake of this example and then choose here whether we want to add a goal for this specific system pretty much what the goal object is going to do is it's going to give the uh, bug something to follow and move toward in the world so generally I want to add a goal to most of the bug void systems that I add so we'll go ahead and select this and finally we'll just choose our 3d cursor where we want the bug void system to be and click on add bug system and now as you can see here if we uh, play through our system here we have some black widows coming from our particle emitter here and uh, yeah they're just kind of crawling out because our goal is right in the center of our particle emitter they're not really doing anything right now but if we select our goal empty here we can drag this off to the side and start playing through it again and now as you can see, they kind of tend to move toward the goal object um, with the exception of some of these going off to the side here. But of course you can adjust these uh, void settings in the Blender particle system panel. Um, there are a lot of different things you can do here. You can you know, scale up your particle emitter 
to get a wider distribution of bugs kind of crawling everywhere. Um, you can, you know, move your goal object and animate your goal object to wherever and uh, get a little bit different uh, distribution of bugs for the scene, but it totally depends on the look you're going for. As I said earlier, I'll go ahead and just go to the Blender Particle System panel here just to show some of the main settings that I play around with when I'm creating some of these shots. So, of course, you have, um, you know, your general particle emission settings here. I'll go through a lot of these settings in more detail in future videos, but some of the main settings that I play around with here are the Boyd Brain settings. So, for example, right now, these uh, spiders are crawling generally toward our goal object here. However, if we want them to take a little bit more direct route, what we can do is we can go to the Boyd Braid settings here under the Particle System tab, and we can move goal to the top of the list. And what that's going to do, as you can see here, if we scroll up and bake the cache, it is going to make the bugs have a much higher priority to get to the goal object. So as you can see here, they're not distributing off to the side here. They're pretty much taking a almost direct route to the goal object. So depending on the look you're going for, you can play around with the Boyd settings. I'll go ahead and delete the bake here and move the goal back down. We've tried to choose default settings within Spider-Fi that work for most systems. However, you may need to adjust a few just to get a little bit different look. Some other things I like to adjust as well are uh, maybe the render size of each particle and the scale randomness so for example if I want to scale up the bugs to make them a little bigger or if I want to make them a little bit more random in size as you can see now we have some smaller spiders included in the distribution and uh, that will help a lot with some realism if you're going for a more realistic look also under the movement tab here under physics you can change you know your land speed the uh, land acceleration you can change if you want them to jump or not you know you can change all kinds of settings but again the default should get you started in a pretty good direction but uh, yeah that's pretty much it here one more important thing is that you need to bake your particle system whenever you're experimenting with it so what we can do here under the particle system tab we just go ahead and select bake now all of the particle movement is baked into the computer so that we can uh, see exactly what it's doing and whenever you want to change a setting to experiment further with different options you would just go to delete bake and then you know change whatever setting you want maybe you want to change the acceleration or something or even if you you know move your particle system you would just change that and then you would just go up to bake again and it will bake it pretty quick as you can see there within a few seconds and uh, now it has a totally new distribution of spiders which uh, you know looks pretty cool all right guys I know this video is getting pretty long but finally to finish off this video I'll just go to rendered view and show off the 3d work on these assets that Elliot phase the 3d artist that we worked with to create these assets um, has done here as you can see here super detailed assets I'm rendering an Eevee right now. You can maybe uh, turn the uh, brightness of our ground plane down a little bit here just to get a little bit better idea of what we're working with. You know, as you can see, super detailed uh, work on the assets. Really nice work by Elliot. I'll put a link to his Instagram page below. You know, rendering out an Eevee. These look really good. You can, of course, switch to uh, Cycle's rendering engine as well. And they look, you know, just as awesome. I'd say look even better. But, you know, honestly, Eevee looks really good rendering these assets. All of the uh, renders in the trailer I uh, rendered in Cycle's because we're going for a little bit more photorealism there. But uh, anyways, just wanted to show off the uh, detail there for those assets. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this short demo video. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more videos in the future and I'll see you next time.